Um, today I'm going to talk about a comparison between the life that I led in US and the life that I lead in India. Hi, I'm Nupur Dave and I help NRIs make critical decisions. I moved to the United States to get my master's degree in industrial engineering and then I joined Google moving from Atlanta to California. I spent about 13 years in the United States before I moved back to India. I got the opportunity to work in various different companies in India. Currently, at the time of this video, I am on break to write my third book, which is on single NRIs, and I also consult NRIs now. Uh, let's start with the morning routine. So pretty much the same in terms of when I wake up. I wake up by 6 a.m. in both countries. One big difference in the 6 a.m. view is more greenery and fresher air in the United States than what I found in India. In the US, I think it's much easier to go for a morning run or go outside. In India, it's much harder because there are fewer options of outdoor activities. Your mileage may vary though. For example, this is the view that I had from my apartment in San Francisco. Uh, it was a lot of concrete, but it was still nice. I could see the steel of the Bay Bridge. The difference what I've seen is that I'm more well rested in India, whereas in the US, I believe I would get only about five hours of sleep and uh, we'll see why that was so. After I wake up, I get some time to do things here in, in India. Uh, in the US, uh, what I found that at least the life that I was living at that time, when I was living close to office, it gave me a chance to go to the gym. But uh, when I was living in San Francisco, I had to run to catch the bus. So my bus would come at like 7 or 5 a.m. And I remember just getting ready in a hurry and rushing out of the door to catch the bus. Um, I have fond memories of it. I actually enjoyed, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed uh, running and getting the bus. And I was always early, but uh, just that, you know, um, sort of rush for a fast paced life uh, had uh, kept me uh, going. And I feel that um, I really enjoyed that bus ride uh, that I used to have, although it used to take about an hour. Uh, coming back to life in India, uh, in the morning I go to the gym. Uh, I am lucky that I have a gym close to my place. In uh, the US, I really uh, was able to access gyms uh, by just driving to them. And in India, that's not the case. In India, you really have to be lucky or you have to be okay with driving to a certain location for a gym that you like. I've, I've tried everything. I've tried boot camps in India. I've tried, you know, all these all women classes. I've tried uh, getting a trainer to come home. I have done um, online classes home. And it just helped me maintain my weight. Uh, luckily, uh, at this point in time, I am very close to a gym where the instructor is really, really open minded. So I'm able to uh, get the a good workout that I need uh, from there. However, what I found was fitness wise, US is magnitudes ahead uh, in terms of accessibility and also the uh, soft skills that trainers have and your access to uh, great, great equipment. Uh, running wise, I joined a running group in India, but that didn't quite work out for me because I my philosophy was slightly different from theirs and of where I was located, there weren't many uh, options uh, for running. Uh, in the US, it was so much easier to be fitter. I could do marathon running and, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, hobbies uh, at the end of this video. Let's talk about getting to office. In India, Uber is the primary mean of uh, commute for a lot of millennials and uh, it may be for you as well if you're at NRI looking to move. The problem with Uber, especially uh, if I talk about Bangalore, is that during the golden hours of 8.30 to say 10.30, 11, It'll be impossible, if not hard to find an Uber. You could be waiting at least like 10 minutes to an hour for getting a match on all different sort of apps that you have at your disposal. Which is why a lot of people in India have a rickshawala bhaiya or an Uber bhaiya, that uh, driver bhaiya that they can call and they'll come in the morning. They will charge extra, but the predictability of them coming is um, worth it. So I had a rickshawala bhaiya who used to charge me about 150 rupees for two kilometers distance. 
uh, it is expensive it's double the price that uber would charge but the predictability of him coming and me not wasting time sitting and waiting for the app was worth it for me in the us of course you drive yourself so uh, that's what i did uh, in when i lived in san francisco i had the privilege of taking the google bus to office and i really really enjoyed that one difference i want to t tell you about is when i was in the office cab here in bangalore we had uh, cab mates and we would be talking all the time it was really fun we were chattering all the time i made friends with them in the united states is not acceptable to talk in the bus so it was pin drop silence i did not make friends out of those 3 years of commute uh, and um, i wish that things change uh, so that you make friends uh, bus friends what this helps in india when you have a driver to drive you is that it conserves your energy so in your commute to office you can end up doing other things like checking your email let's talk about breakfast in india my maid makes my breakfast so i take my breakfast to office i also had been i've been in companies where breakfast lunch and dinner have been served in office so i've been a bit privileged in that sense but uh, just typically um, a breakfast i uh, was fortunate to have a few friends who would come earlier to office or rather they became my friends because they would come to office early and we all used to have breakfast together in the us it was what i call a rush breakfast so uh, i would step out of my bus go to the cafeteria order my latte get uh, a to go box and i still remember walking with that hot cup in my hand in the cold weather to my desk and having breakfast then that ugh, hot cup was so comforting um so yeah i used to have breakfast at my desk in the us and in india um i've been having it uh, breakfast with people um your mileage may vary i know that many people have different experiences this is my experience i'm just talking about it what time is office start so in lot of indian offices people come in by 10:30 11 am so most of our first few meetings started by 10 where we had a 10 am sync and then 11 is when the larger masses would come in and we'd have uh, larger stand ups or a sprint planning meetings at that time in the us I was in the infrastructure team so we used to have a uh, first meeting at 8:30 a.m. or 9 a.m. and everybody would be in office by then uh, so same US and India we done meetings till lunch now lunch is slightly different because here in India people have lunch together uh, we eat from each other's plate people understand the veg non veg don't mix your spoon thing Uh, and uh, i made a lot of i had made a lot of friends at office so they'd be like pulling my leg and we'd be cracking jokes and having a lot of fun so lunch was literally 1 hour in india in the us lunch was a shorter period uh, for the simple reason that people have um, you know meetings to go to and many times i'd had i'd have lunch at my desk it it's my fault that i didn't have lunch with um my american coworkers uh, for the reason is that i felt like many people didn't understand what vegetarian um choices that i made again i have been lucky to be in places where lunch has been served in office but a lot of people still get dabba from home because they have leftover food or they have a maid who comes in and cooks for their whole family so it makes sense to get uh, lunch from home um again meeting still 5 pm in the us after 5 pm people would go home in india you wait till 7 pm you will still find people in office chock a block talking a lot of noise and lot of laughter um I'm not portraying it as a good or bad, but uh, it did kind of feel odd to pick up my bags at 6 p.m. and walk out. Um, I've been a bit resilient to it, but um, nobody tells you anything, but it just kind of feels awkward. so in india um the number of things i could do after i came back home is very limited so for example if it's raining in bangalore i pretty much can't do anything like i was confined to home 
in the us there's so much you can do uh, post um, office and i remember for me it was more about going to the gym spending an hour hour and a half there uh, getting my lunch uh, my dinner in a box taking the bus and moving coming back to the city or doing a boot camp or something like that uh, so and uh, after coming back i was able to do other things as well now here's the thing when i enter my home in india um i have a maid and she's already cleaned my home and she's put things in place all the uh, vessels are washed i feel privileged that i have someone to help me out at home in the us i didn't so i'd have to do all the chores myself which is cleaning uh cooking uh, uh cooking my dinner if i didn't like the dinner at office and um you know the host of things that you have to do the ironing the washing the laundry everything you have to do on your own and here again i feel privileged to have someone to help me this means that i could serve my energy so that i can do other things like watch netflix just kidding <laughs> Let's talk about weekends. Um, in India, what I do on the weekends, uh, what I've ended up doing is hanging out with my cousins or my friends, or uh, maybe going to a cafe and writing because that's um, what I do, what I like to do. Uh, but with friends uh, in the US, I think I was able to do much more. I was able to pack much more in a day. I was able to do shopping. I was able to go for breakfast, lunch, dinner with different friends. Um, I could even run a marathon in the United States. Um, I would. I used to do long runs with them on on weekends, and there were so many places to explore in the U.S. So I feel that weekends there was more to do, but there's also a lot of loneliness that you have to take care of, uh, which is not as present in india at the, the magnitude that it is in the us so to do a complete comparison of the big magnitude differences that i find in us life versus india life is one you can pack much much more in a day in um, developed countries like the united states as a woman i really need to think about clothing in india so what i found is that i can't pack so much in a day i can't do one after the other things because i have to come home change and dress appropriately for the place and location that i'm going to for example if i'm going to the pharmacy i have to dress down in street clothes i can't just walk in my skirt i can do that but people stare the crap out of you and i i don't enjoy that um another point is that i feel there's less a mental stress in india because you can conserve your energy and you have a lot of logistical help and support like you have your uber driver who's driving for you you have your maid who comes in and cooks for you so all that energy gets conserved and you can do other things and you feel more energetic and less stressed also you're not on a visa here so that stress about earning every month kind of goes away and makes you a little more freer The last point is something very specific to me uh, if you want to achieve something at a larger scale both countries may be good i just feel for someone like me as a woman the united states is a better place for grabbing opportunities and networking and scaling there and achieving something big than india though this could we get flipped for a lot of other people it depends on you i can totally imagine somebody who has an entrepreneurial spirit leave his job in the us come to india start something of his own and be able to scale and build that up so it just depends on your personality and also your gender a little bit unfortunately so yeah that was my life um, i just recently visited the united states and i could just clearly see the difference between what i was able to achieve in the us versus what i was able to achieve in india It's my mission to help NRIs. If you're an NRI, please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and also LinkedIn and I hope to see you soon.